In the past, you could normally recommend someone that was targeting 4K60 or 4K in general, a quote unquote mid tier GPU, uh, CPU. 600 or 700, rather than the highest end ones, since you'd mostly be GPU bound and you would only typically get a bit higher average frame rate and 1%, 0.1% uh, lows. Now, given the extra prevalence of RT in recent games, newer engines and more importantly, horrible core slash thread optimization becoming more co common every day. Do you think the same recommendation still applies or is a more expensive CPU becoming a necessity for stable 4K gaming, regardless of the GPU you might choose? Uh, Alex, I'm going to come to you mm -hmm. on this one, but I want to get in some of my observations first, which is that basically at the moment, like a 13700K um, is is basically a slightly lower clocked um, 13900K with fewer efficiency cores. And so you don't really need those efficiency cores, I would venture to suggest for gaming. Um, secondly, I want to take issue with this whole concept of the 1% and 0.1% lows, because um, what are they, right? If it's shader compilation stutter, then it's it's kind of like so intrusive to the experience that writing them off as like a 0.1% low, I think, is actually a disservice. Yes. Secondly, the, the, the whole nature of um, average benchmark, benchmarks across an average, right, is that, well, put it this way. If your average only included, say, five seconds of footage that included the stutter, it would no longer be a 0.1% or 1%. It would be much, much more. So how long does your clip have to be? <laughs> uh, because it's going to basically, the longer your clip is, the more the intrusive elements are going to be smoothed away by the average. And I think that's, you know, so I guess that's why there's the 1% and 0.1%. Uh, 0 0.1%. Yeah. To, yeah, exist in the first place. But at the same time, you know, I actually think when you do your stutter counts, you know, okay, we had 60 stutters in 50 minutes of gameplay. That is far more indicative. Yeah, of, gosh, no. Oh my where God. Where do we go with this? I, I think, you know, <laughs> you know, if I think the, the mid range CPUs like the like 13400 are actually really, really good these days. Yes. But to, to you know, the concept of minimizing stutter, uh, I think is more what Esteban is talking about here. And this is something we need to a bit more investigation into because I don't think there is a one size fits all solution, which is by this processor. No, I don't think so either. And I think the best thing you can really do is ensure that you have, if you're going first, like 4K60, I to, I'm presuming this person means Esteban, that you, you're thinking about yeah. like all these RT settings, like cycle rate tracing, et cetera, path tracing and Alan Wake. Um, and I think there, for most games that don't have the big issues that actually, I think actually a mid range, like that, that, uh, that lower third, what is it? 13,400? What did you just call 13, it? 13,400. 13, 13, yeah, F, yeah. F. I think that's actually probably going to get you there for a lot of titles. Um, pretty well. I don't see why it wouldn't. Uh, it's really only like in the most problematic of titles where we see issues with like these slightly lower core counts and slightly lower caches and things like that, that where it might mm. get in the way versus something like a 13700K. I really think you just need eight cores uh, if you really want to do everything just to be like completely certain because barely any game is using more than eight cores. A lot of games are running not even that great with hyperthreading. It's really embarrassing. Um <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just eight cores and it get as fast as it possibly can. I think the the new 3D processors from AM, from AMD are doing exactly that. Uh and on the Intel side that 7 13700K and whatever its replacement is going to be, hopefully there's some price dropping that might occur at some point in time. Uh I don't think you need to care at all about e cores and I'm every single time I load up a game and I see e cores causing issues with like as in decreasing frame rates a little bit, I am just constantly wondering what is going on both on the development side and i'm also wondering what intel's market focus is going to be for the future because if, if they're advertising their cpus there a lot of games that they're going to be showing in their average benchmarks for are going to be getting worse performance with the e-course on then at that point mm. in time and that's not good well it's not good optics and it's also they're making their product uh worse at some point in time for the average gamer uh, by 
this with this e-core focus i'm really i don't know the e-core thing is really bothering me lately i'm just thinking like because i've loaded up so many games now recently where the e-cores are just a negative on the experience it's like jeez what if their next cpu was only (laughs) (laughs) e-cores they could get away with it they could call it like the pentium or something just do it bring revive the celeron name the cell revive the celeron it's only (laughs) e-cores it's Um, only e-cores and it's only ddr4 (laughs) or something just do something fun um i think you know i think the other thing of course is that when you you know the, the way to power past stutter is to basically have higher clock right so maybe you would want a k, a k chip but it doesn't really matter you know let's say your um 150 millisecond stutter becomes 100 milliseconds with that extra clock it's, it's still crap it's still crap <laughs> it's still junk you you're still waiting for a generation of better cpu at that point uh and that's not what you're getting S- several generations yeah i know I mean, right I, I i do think there is you know i'm, I'm kind of thinking that maybe there is in, in my fantasy world you know an x3d chip with like some ultra low latency ddr5 might make some sort of dent really in, big in dent. that but yeah. it, but it's it's something we'd need to test i do have some low latency memory around here but even so it's it's you know it is basically a software problem not a hardware problem yeah but that's that's that yeah that's why jacking up your your rig to just solve software issues i think that's what you could historically do with normal scaling but a stutter is not normal scaling it is like it's like usually like 10 times worse than the average mil like average like frame yeah. time in that moment think about that like wow yeah i think um, <laughs> esteban talks about rt and definitely there are games where it just adds an extra layer of 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 a, of a performance hit to, mm-hmm. your, to your game yeah thinking of something like plague tale for example that you know, it has a big GPU hit just for the shadows, but it also has a CPU implication as well. Mm-hmm. So I guess that's a scenario where, you know, quite possibly you'd want your 600 or 700 class uh, CPU. So, yeah, that, that's something you could bear in mind. But um, typically when you do have those cheaper um, G- uh, CPUs, they're matched with less capable GPUs. So mm-hmm. it doesn't really present an interesting question. Though. I really would like to spend some time and try and look into this, you know, pick you know basically can you make jedi survivor smooth can you make hogwarts smooth can you make and, dead space uh, smooth can you yeah making hogwarts smooth well that's that's longer. another thing i think there was a question a bit later on about reversal stutter i'm not sure if it made it in but okay. i guess that's another thing you know we've got basically scenarios now where storage might have an impact Could, um, yeah. but even so it is a scenario where um it's just you know they, they really should be thinking about um next generation storage APIs, that sort of thing to, mm-hmm. to sort of smooth that over. 